class of Haverhill High School for the 2024 MIAA Division I State Bad Tournament. I'm Josh Delgazo, joined by my partner in crime, Jonathan Bird Marching. Jonathan, we're in hilly country as our Everett Crimson Tide take on the Haverhill Hillies. Everett comes in, ranked 36 at 15 and 5, taking on the 28th seed Haverhill Hillies, who are 9 and 11, but are probably from the best conference in the state, the Merrimack Valley. What do you look for and expect to see tonight? Do not go, do not let these kids go quietly because they're 9 11. They're in a tough conference, like you said. Do not take them lightly. It's the playoffs. You gotta go full throttle right now. You can't do anything lightly. Go full throttle, gas to the floor, no brakes, and let's get this W tonight because if you sit the brakes just for a little bit, they will take advantage of you and they'll run right down the hill and just slob you. Absolutely right, Bird. Now the Hillies are going to play physical basketball. They have a thousand points score in number three, Jonathan Wallace, and the Tide are going to have to be able to contend him everywhere he's on the floor. And then they have a number of guys that can just step in, fill up when their number's called. They're going to play fundamental mistake-free basketball. And again, you touched upon their conference. It is, without question, in my opinion, the best in the state. So they see the very best night in, night out. And that's why they have themselves a home contest here tonight. So as you can see, we have the starting lineups being introduced just as we are ready for tip-off. This is a 6 p.m. tip-off from Haverhill, Massachusetts. The Crimson Tide wearing their black road jerseys with red numbers as they take on the Hillies with their home whites and gold numbers. And we will now bring you the singing of our national anthem. We'll be ready to go with our broadcast. This one's getting ready to go, and we have a nice contingent that made its way from Everett. Yes, they see, did. Uh, a, a large contingent of the football team just showed up, and also members of the sub varsity levels for the basketball team are here, and just students in general. So, kind of large contingent. See some of the baseball close. players as well. Hey, all right, we got Aiden Duclos getting me all fired up. You already know. One other thing I should look out for for the Hill Haverhill Hillies. Coming off the bench, the average height is like 6'2". They have a, two kids that are 6'4", and it's all 6'2 and up. So everyone's got to box those guys out and get the offensive and defensive rebounds. 
Loud crowd here in the gymnasium in Haverhill. Tip-off is just about underway. You see Coggins. Get ready for the tip-off. Here we go. Number 15, Saul Cruz Mateus. And number 23, Alejandro Delgado. Crimson Tide basketball to start things off. There you go. Take it in hard. The Crimson Tide go as Jay Sean Coggins goes. Like the Hillies are going to employ their press, full court press, on the tie. And Bounds goes to DeRusso, quickly finds the point guard, Berberena. Berberena and Chum will navigate the Crimson Tide offense. Coggins, as you mentioned, is the key guy offensively, and then also that guy. Yeah, there you go. Nice. DeRusso and Coggins have a very nice inside out tandem working in the post. Keep that going. Everett showing some pressure on the D. Crowd screaming took too many steps. Three pointer by the thousand point scorer, Jonathan Wallace. Mr. 1K. You can see where he can knock it down. Top of the key three is good for the senior. 43 Crimson Tide on top. Wow. Three pointer is no good. Coggins with the rebound. Leandro Rosario drives, looks to go to the basket. Dorosario's basket is good. And the Crimson Tide are red hot to start this game. Eight to three. There'll be a confusion here. I don't know why. No, it looks like they're just trying to get. It, it seemed like they was just trying to get the crowd that was walking on the baseline. Ah, uh, gotcha, gotcha. All right. We're, we're really right on top of the court. There's oh, yeah, we are. No, there's like space zero space. Yeah. Zero space. Mind you, of Hoosiers. Yes. Gets it back, drives the whole way up. And it's good. The put back. Is it on the floor? Uh, no, no, he's, he's going, going in. To All right. The line. So Dorisano will go to the line straight too.
Here's the second attempt. This is both. Can't be doing that in the playoffs. I need to hit your free throws. Ever pressing. Oh, reaching. You gotta reach yep. out there. That's gonna be on, looks like 11. Yep, Al DeRusso, that's his first personal. As he was coming across him, he tried to reach in and get it out of his hands. I don't blame him for trying to do that. Oh, wide open. Nice backdoor cut right there. Delgado completes it off the window. Six quick points for Alejandro Delgado. Oh, nice cut. Caruso's up. No good. Well defended at the rim. Ball number 24, Jonathan Matumbo. Going strong. Nice finish by Liam Dorisaro. Got the red ball with this offhand. Nice job by the lefty finishing with the right. Yeah. Tied up by three. Yep, right off the rebound. Just took it right to the hole. Matembo's three is no good. Tied quickly with their eyes up. Soon thinks about it. Drives. Kicks it back out. Dorisario for three. That's good. by six. So you see both teams during the timeout. Coach Boyce going over what's going on. Gotta keep the tempo up, keep it going. All We're right, here we go, back in play. Well, not back in play, but I had yeah. to make a microphone switch, so back in play for my broadcast. Coming at you a little tinny. Hopefully I was still audible, because a lot of people tune in to hear, uh, yeah, us. hear us, right? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I know, I know. You gotta watch the product, but the product's been great to start so far this game. We're coming off a timeout called by Haverhill, but it was Lee and Dorisario scorching the nets with the three, and Dorisario has come out blazing to start this game. Yes, he has. He's got his game face on. He's locked in. And ready to take over. All right, we're back in play. Oh, oh be careful of the body right there. The rest of them play a little bit. Ah, right, there's nothing wrong with that. Oh, boy, nice look. Ooh. Nice job by Henry Pinto. Coming down with the rebound and then absorbing the foul. Hey, we got to talk about it. Pinto was big in that East Boston game. He checked into that game late. We talked about it during that broadcast. But once again, Pinto, when his number's called, he shows up ready to go. And this is going to be crucial here in the playoffs. Swinging it all the way around. Go oh! was looking for this space jam, but Pinto comes up with the rebound, throws it in, the hoop, and some harm. Good job staying engaged, grabbing the rebound, and putting it right back up in there. Nice offensive rebound. Set up the O. There you go, set it up. Ball's in the corner. That'll be Havel's ball. I like Dorisario taking that three. He's been red hot to stop. Nice steal. Every time, press coming up with one there. Coggins gets the two tied up by 10. Three-pointer good by number 11, Colin. 
Dan Snyder, the senior with the big corner three. Offensive rebound. Jay Sean Coggins with the corner three. Tied up by 10, 22-12 as we approach the two-minute mark here in the first quarter. Snyder just made one. He's got the look. That's no good. Dorisario comes down with the rebound. Poked away sure, by Delgado. Jean, number 10, and number 15, Christian Vasquez. This is good play inside for Vasquez. You can find him in the wing or in the corner. You can set him up with a nice three because he's the best shooter on the team. That's right, Bird. Can't leave him open like that. No, oh, yeah, that's his space. That's his third. Second or oh, third? Third. That's Snyder again. You can tell he's that big shot shooter from the outside. on the clock, 25 on the shot clock. 15 second difference. Oh, nice, nice look. Pass. Beautiful pass by Pinto to the cutting Barbarina. Does that flex offense right there, cutting right across the middle for the wide open layup. Oh, they're gonna go out still right there. Another corner three. No good. Out of bounds, gonna stay with the Hillies. Final 
10 seconds. Pinto drives quick. Nice take by Pinto. Doesn't go. Be careful. No reaching in. Play out the last three seconds. Not even close. And after one quarter of play, it's the Crimson Tide up 26-17. Bird, a lot of good things from the Crimson Tide side of things. What would you like to see there? Uh, they're taking the wide open shots. They're driving to the pole. They're getting the easy layups. They got to work on the free throws a little bit. The, what, two for five or six, I believe. Other than that, turnovers have been low. They're getting offensive and defensive rebounds. They keep this tempo up and keep it going strong. The Hillies are keeping hanging in there with Delgado and the trap shooter number 11. Colin Snyder hitting like two or three threes right there. So they just got to get a hand in their face and stay on top of Delgado and think they'll be all right. Yeah. Not much to not like from the effort side of things. Defensively, they were they were checking their spots, getting over quickly, rotating, yes. and then they had it going offensively. And then Fahavro still able to absorb a lot of that punch and only down nine. They showed what they could do from the outside and a very big time interior presence as we talked about. Number 23, Alejandro Delgado, the six foot three inch senior, was imposing down low. So the Tide are going to have to keep. Keep a tabs on those guys. And again, keep in mind, Jonathan Wallace, he made his first three. He's missed a 1K for the Hillies, but he, he didn't exactly erupt. So that, that could be a sneaky good thing for Haverhill because they expect him to get going. If you're the tide, you like that stat so far, but keep an eye on number three. Going to have to try to keep him quiet to continue to assert themselves in this game. Absolutely. Just going to hand his face when he shoots. Second quarter out of the way. Nice cut right there and finish by number 15, Saul Cruz Matthias. Oh, nice, nice finish right there, Liam Dorisario. Love it. Torresario with the huge first half. Oh, there's that man. Can't leave him open. Got away with one there. Wallace is the guy that can knock it down. Good rebound by DeRusso. Pass unable to be handled. Oh! Wow, Jay Sean Coggins coming back into the picture. Out Great of bounds. Block. It's gonna be crimson, it's gonna be hilly basketball. Keep tabs on number three right there. He's he can get it going from the perimeter. He's out in the wing. Snyder from the corner. That's his third. Yeah, Snyder really has been big time. Got to start to tighten that up. Snyder's keeping the Hillies in this game. Wow, what a finish by Berberina going high off the window right over the outstretched hand of Delgado. That was as pretty as it gets. Tied back up by eight. It's been the Hillies three-point shooting that has had them in this game. Reach your foul right there. Tyson Chun picking up the personal. That's his first. He just checks out. Vicente Jean stepping up big coming off the bench. I tell you what he did. 
And that little sequence right there. Defensively, back at this end of the floor, he stayed his ground and stayed in front of Wallace. And then you saw it offensively, showing his strength, able to rip that ball and then go up, got himself a chance for two freebies at the line. So this is great atmosphere. Gene finds Coggins. Coggins over to Berberena. Works out of the corner. Down to 20 on the shot clock. Vasquez going to try the three. That's no good. Rebound goes to the Berberena. The tie keep it. Driving baseline. Kicks it out. In the corner. Drives again. Great pass. Sean Coggins says hello. Woo! Oh, mama, there goes that man. Sometimes you got to watch out when he comes streaking down the lane like that. My goodness, what a dunk. Right there. there you go, kick it out. It just the lights just went. There we go, keep going. Ever Crane turnovers, taking advantage. Offensive rebounds. Oh, lost it right there. They go driving, going to the hole hard. Balls bounce around like a volleyball. Good D by the tide, good D. Put back by Delgado. And we have a timeout call. We have a 10 point game with 424 left in the second quarter. 34 24. But wow, how about that electric dunk by Coggins? Got this place going. Yes, it did. This game has been very physical. The refs didn't really call that much. You see, you see one guy, one the ball handler, like three guys around him just throwing elbows, and I kind of enjoy it because it brings me back to those '80s, '90s basketball games. <laughs> the old Pistons, Bulls, yeah. right? Oh yeah. Or our Celtics too. They were pretty good at that thing. Yes, they were. Yeah, no, the, the pace so far has suited the Crimson Tide. They've been able to get out in front, score, and then set up their defensive press, which has really shown shown its way with its suffocation. And I love the way Crimson Tide is slowing it down, set up their offense, looking for that layup, a jump shot. Solid, solid first half of the Crimson Tide so far. As soon as the student body stands up, I can't see a thing. It's pretty funny. I'm running over to our production studio right there, in the corner. Yeah, I've been getting my calf raises going. I've been on my calves the whole time. About 6'3 on my calves. <laughs> nice. But, yeah, they're, they're feeling it, though. Oh, yeah. All right, so we're back in play. It's going to be Crimson Tide basketball after this timeout. 4.24 left in the first half. Tied up by 10, 34-24. Great passing right there. Tide really owning the offensive glass. Stevie Nunes works at the Dorisario. Coggins going to try it from downtown. That's good. Jay Sean Coggins having the first down. That's his second three. Nice. Put back by Delgado off the 
steal. Santos next time just has to bring it down. That's it. Timeout ever. Smart Wise call. timeout called by Coach Boyce. Oh, yeah. You said it though, yeah. Dorisario wants to come down with that rebound. He tried the, the quick little tip pass, yeah, but you got to be sure of those if you're going to do it. Otherwise, bring it down, wait for your teammates, or exactly. bring it up yourself. Know your surroundings. He said it. Cool. quick, but they just, just make it. Okay, cool. Oh, just you. bring it down. That's his, going out of bounds right there. I don't know. That's his only mistake so far in the first half. He's really been outstanding. Great start, though, really. Uh, a lot of fun. But, again, with that being said, it feels like it's all Everett, and a lot of it has been. Still only an 11-point game. It can get real wiry. I mean, you get a couple threes from the other side, and all of a sudden it's it's into the low singles, and yeah, you're chopping at the bit again. So, But, again, for the tie, just keep doing what you're doing. I'd like to see them separate a little bit more, but the Haverhill three-point game has really kept themselves in it. And, again, I'm going to talk about it. The play of Delgado, I mean, number 23, the big fellow for Haverhill has been immense down low. He's done a lot of things, and then the three-point shooting. That's why Haverhill is not down 20 right now. But credit to them. They've hung around. They've absorbed the Crimson Tide punches. Yep. The Tide just need to keep punching. I mean, you got Jonathan Wallace hitting threes, and you got Colin Snyder hitting about three or four of them. Senior stepping up big for his squad. And here we go. And we'll take it out. Pinto in there. Nice pass. Good luck. Nice job. Good pass by Nunes. Great finish by DeRusso. <laughs> Snyder just going back and forth. Nice steal right there for the Crimson Tide. Pinto, look at Pinto. Oh, go. nice hook. Oh, oh that was so a good look. look. It, was, it, it just was. just off the hands of DeRusso. Maybe there was a little bit too much velocity, but I like the idea. Thread of the needle. Pinto's done a good job putting the ball on the deck tonight and showing his ball handling ability for a big fella. And Pinto's coming out for a second. And Ruiz coming in. Coaches. Mad about something over no, there. he wanted to make a different sub. He wanted Pinto to stay in. He wanted Alison DeRusso oh, out. Oh, oh, boy. So Pinto is at the scorer's table, but he'll have to await the next whistle. So Pinto's back in. Oh, Coggins nice. gets a piece of it. All right, enough of the volleyball stuff, boys. No, it was an inadvertent whistle. Inadvertent whistle. Oh, right. Hey, oh, Hilly's right. basketball. It wasn't backcourt because it was deflected. No, you made the right call. You made the right call. Absolutely. Nice job by Coggins, though, showing how his length. Coggins has blocked three pointers like all season. And he's deceptive. He'll come over from like the elbow and just spring up and get it with his length. Salt pass? No. Here you go. Take it away from him. Here comes Coggins. He's going to do it. Oh, he lost it. Oh, nice, nice reach by Coggins. Nice rebound, Pinto. Great job, Pinto. Coggins. Yeah, he's yep. the free throw Absolutely. Line. Uh, one more. One. I think that might have been on the deck. Oh, no, you're right. You're right. He, he's strung up the two. It's, it's free throws. I wasn't sure if it was on the deck, but you were right. It's a shooting foul. So Coggins going to the line for two.
Coggins goes two for two. All right, here we go. Coggins defending Wallace. Tied up by 15. Oh, there it is. Delgado comes up with its spin cycle. Wow. What a finish by Delgado, who's put the team on his back. Went to the spin, throws it off the window. That's a big-time move. Huge move by Delgado. For a second there, then they got the steal, but end up in the Hillies' hands. And Delgado did a spin move and took a trip to the free throw line. That's a lane violation. Lane violation against Haverhill. Yep, so the, three, the, the free throw did not count. So just the two pointer that Delgado made. And it's 41 29, Crimson Tide. 129 left in the first half. for the traveling violation. It looks like Pinto's going to check back into the game. Ty defense got to play solid right now. It's a minute 20 left. You right. can't give in to any threes or easy layups. Make them earn it. Absolutely. Don't give any life to the Hillies going into halftime. Nice, nice D. trip. There you go, Pinto. And he draws a foul, but you know it's a great effort right there to try and get the ball for his team. Absolutely. It really started with Dorisario. He was able to poke away the entry pass. Pinto hitting the deck. That is the fifth team foul for the Crimson Tide. So free throws are coming up for number 14, Hunter Blaze. See, we'll get our info corrected. I know we're off by a three or two. <laughs> we're yeah, excited. We're yeah, excited. We're He's perfect at the free throw line so far. Going two for two. I like that pass. Oh, my goodness. Tied up by 11, under 50 seconds to go here. Oh, boy. Good D. Good job closing out on Snyder, who's been there terrific. There you go. Oh, oh look out. Look out. Oh. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Nice job by Gene getting it over to Berberita. I Berberina. just killed the clock. Shot clock is off. Oh, no. Snyder with the big three. Shot clock is off if the Tide want it. Yeah, they're, they're slowing it down. Smart they move. should. At minimum, you want to take the eight-point lead going to the break. Have a ball. Is the end of the first half with the score Everett 41, Haverhill 33. Bird, what did you like? What didn't you like there in that first half? Give us what you liked. I like how the Crimson Tides are passing the ball around, setting up the offense, getting the open shot, driving to the lane, hitting those open threes. Defensively, they're all over the place, doing a great job getting in front of the ball, creating turnovers. The offense. 
offensive and defensive rebounding has been great so far in the first half. I've noticed it. They've gotten like three or four offensive rebounds in one series, and I was just blown away by that. I'm very proud of these, I'm very proud of these kids, and it's been an exciting second half, Josh. Yeah, I mean, really, if, if your effort, it was an outstanding start to that first half. But credit the Hillies. They kind of hung tough there. Well, they absolutely did. They were able to absorb those punches thrown by the Crimson Tide. And they had that big three-pointer by Snyder, his fourth three of the first half, to cut the Hilly deficit to eight as we go into halftime. So stay with us. This thing is just starting to heat up. I'm Josh Delgazo. He's Bird Marchant. We'll be back with second half action.
second half just moments away from getting back into things. The Crimson tied up 41-33. Bird, give us some of the stat leaders there from that first half. So Delgado and Snyder, Conslin has four threes. He has an anything inside the paint. So obviously he's a three-point threat right there. They got to close him down. And Delgado has 14 points. So it'll be 26 of the points, and the rest of the team has seven. So we got to shut those two down. But don't sleep on Jonathan Wallace. He didn't have a three. He's a thousand-point scorer, like you said. He might just explode in the second half, and that Crimson High Demon's got to keep him contained. And for the average side, Coggins has 12. Uh, Santos has nine. Roberna has six. You know, but it's been a team game for them. Everyone's spread the love, but Coggins is the lead with 14. And Sanders is in second with the second most points on the team so far with a 41-33 lead here. So, yeah, if you're on the hilly side of things, you're not terribly upset where you are right now. You said it. You're down eight with their top scorer having a, a fairly quiet first half. Not because he's been missing, just the title's done a good job on him. But, again, anytime you have a 1,000-point scorer, it's hard to contain guys like that for four quarters. And they're doing a great job with that. And the other thing that's been driving me nuts was Kim's tight team. Stop volleyball and the rebounds. Just come down with it. I know a lot of things are going fast in your head. Just come down with it. You have to make a turnover and they create points off those turnovers. You can't let that happen anymore. Everett, just keep doing what got you here. 41 points in that first half. You mentioned a variety of guys fell in the stat sheet offensively. Keep doing what you're doing. Coggins, obviously, he's missed it to everything, but the guy that really wowed me in that first half was Leandor Rosario. He scorched the Nets in the first quarter and then just made key plays to finish that second quarter. He was big time in that first half. My pause, he has 10 points, not 9. You know Coggins is going to get his. Oh, yeah. You know Al DeRusso is going to get his. Yes. If Dorosario continues to do what he's done in this game, I like what I'm seeing for the Crimson Tide. All right, I think yep, Hamill's going to get it. The Hillies with no Billies. Ha-ha. Like that? <laughs> I'm not seeing myself out. Crimson Tide basketball, Berberina starts things off. Hamill going in the zone. Coggins posts it up, makes a move. Ooh, all right, go to the line. Nice job by Coggins being aggressive, and I believe that foul is on number 23, Alejandro Delgado. So Coggins will go to the line shooting, too. Yeah, it's his first for the night. No, actually, oh, second. my mistake, oh, oh, it, it, was, it was on Cruz Matias, number 15. So Cruz Matias picking up his second. I was just going to say, Delgado has zero fouls right now. Six for six at the free throw line, folks. Coggins is just big time. He's big time. Wow. Gets his own rebound, puts it back in. Delgado, there's that guy. Yep. Nice move. Oh, oh just rims up. Coggins is trying to rip it out. Jump ball. Jump ball. All good. That's going to be oh, Haverhill that's basketball. Fine. That's fine. And as you mentioned, the Hilly sat in the second half in that zone. And what they really want to do is really slow down the Crimson Tide offense. Make them have to utilize that shot clock into their half-court set. Hopefully that can pre present them with some defensive problems. And as you can see, the Tide is pressing. And that's going to be over the back. Nice. And wow. that, I believe that is on Delgado. That should be his first. Yes, it is. If it is on Delgado, it's his first. Yep. Yes. Nice. We jinxed him. Looks <laughs> like a half court press. Nice move. Trying to come down with the rebound. Can't. 
Out of bounds, Crimson Tide basketball. Yep. Stepped on the baseline. Haverhill with the half court off. Half court, excuse me. <clears throat> Press right there. Chun's gonna try it from three. That's no good. Delgado comes up with the rebound. Nice block! Coggins. Coggins like, no, you're not doing that around me. It's not happening tonight. If That's... you're in my zone, it's not gonna happen. Second three-point attempt, he's turned aside. Snyder loves the corner. He's at the opposite corner now. Keep an eye on him. Delgado puts it on the deck, drives, free throw line floater. No good. Rebound goes to Delgado. That's no good. Who's going to come up with it? Haverhill with their third opportunity at a basket here in this possession. And the strong drive by Jonathan Wallace will get himself a chance at the line shooting too. The Hillies attacking the offensive glass hard. Allison's second. Hits that one. Makes them both. This is a six-point game. This is as close as it's been for Haverhill since the first half. Tide really need to answer. No! An answer indeed. Tyson Schoen with the big three. That was huge. They needed that. Nice throw over there. There you go. There you go. Nice oh. pass. What a pass. Oh, my God. He was floating in the air. To his boy and makes the two. You said it. That was unbelievable. What a play by Coggins. Coggins coming out to steal. Timeout, Havel. Tied up by 11, 444 Ooh. left in the third quarter. My hat's racing. <laughs> Very intense, the first four minutes here. Well, just about four minutes. Gable's coming out, rebounding like a madman down there on the paint. They've got like three rebounds in that possession right there. They're, they're, they're not going down without a fight. They're like, hey, you might be up a dozen or six. Doesn't matter. We're in your face. We're going to keep bringing it to you. So the Kuta Tide's got to stay focused game and just keep going and those signs all point to a really well coached team when you play that yes. hard your coach is putting it to you keeping that pressure on you to perform at your highest level so the Hillies leaving no doubt as to the team that we thought they were but the Tide continuing to have the answers at the right time now up by 11 but again still no time to rest got to keep that foot in the gas pedal keep cruising yep like I said earlier all gas no break Yeah, that play by Coggins really was outstanding. Maybe, yeah. He, like, yeah. As he was ready to hit the deck, he knew he was hitting the deck to have the presence of mind to make that play. It was wild because he saw the rebounds and he just turned and saw his boy right there. Like, he was legit horizontal at one point. Like, legit. Like, like maybe at 90 degree angle or 45. I don't know my angles right now. I'm too excited about this. But he had the right state of mind to just pass it to him and get the two, block, two points. It's a great hustle by Tyson Chun getting on the floor with the big fella. It's going to stay here with Haverhill. Foul called on Chun. So Hilly basketball. That's a short second. second. We're all right. Foul, 
guys that comes to tie doing pretty well. Nothing too crazy. Oh, I thought I got a piece of that. Nice hands by DeRusso, knocking it out of bounds. It's going to stay with the Hillies. Got to keep an eye on three. Three can heat up. That's Wallace. You don't need him heating up right now here in the second half. Can't happen. on the floor. It was on the floor. Hell of a play, though. <laughs> that was, again, Coggins is just, he's the guy right now. Get it to Coggins and let Coggins cook. There you go, Pinto. Muscle his way in. Draws a foul. Tell you, Coggins, man, is, is doing it all. Aggressive strength. Going to the basket. That's his third. That's Big Bird. Third foul on Jonathan Wallace. Continuing to get dimmer here <laughs> with the lights. Oh, yeah. I think you can see the bulbs ahead of us. Just the two on the right. Oh, Looks like they uh, no, flicker a little okay. bit. Nice shot, Coggins. Coggins goes one for two, tied up by nine. He's seven for eight tonight in the free throw lane. Here comes Elgato driving like a madman and one. Big hoop by Delgado. Chance at a three-point play. That's Coggins' first. Six. Go, Pinto. It's all right. Nice D by Delgado with the block. This is as close as it's been. Yes, it Time has. out, Crimson Tide. Delgado continuing his force down low, and the Hillies down by four. Gut check time for the Tide. Coach Boyce, Chloe, tell the team, guys, slow down. Stop making careless passes. You drive to the hole, it's great. You get blocked, it happens. You got a box out, too. And you can say that the Haverhill zone has been oh, productive. Oh, huge in the second half for them. Absolutely huge. Going to the zone instead of man. But the Crimson Tide has plays for that. And they just got to execute it, you know. On the offense, you have 35 seconds to kill. You see it, you grab it. Both teams' fans are standing up right now and just 
Cheer it away. Oh, nice pass. walk. Oh. All right, great, yeah. great yeah. pass by Pinto. Yeah. Berberina gets fouled. Two, needs to make the second to do just that. Pinto checks out of the game. El DeRusso goes back in. Coggins also back into the game. Quick little rest for Coggins. Nice. Barbarina knocks down the second, tied up by five. Oh, boy. That was on the high. Continuing to do it from downtown. So traveling called on Al DeRusso. Hilly's basketball with their chance at their first lead of the game. If they make a three, otherwise they can tie it with a two. Draws a foul. The time needs to rebound right now. If he misses, get the rebound off the fist. That makes it. Okay, one for two goes Delgado. Hilly's down by one. 50-49 as we approach the two-minute mark here in the third quarter. Tied need to get a hoop. It's been a quiet third for them offensively. And then coming up with the board. Who else but Jay Sean? Nice look down low, finding the mismatch. DeRusso with the finish. Yep, nothing fancy, just simple layup bomb. Right there, wide right open, take it. Out of bounds, gonna stay with the Hillies. I can't see anything. I'm looking at our production studio TV right now. Everyone's standing up. The lens about to pop off at any freaking second now.
Wallace at the line shooting two. 32 seconds left here in the third quarter. Hilly's down by three. So Coggins will go to the line shooting too. One for two, tied up by two. This could be the last shot in the third quarter if Haverhill takes it. Shot clock is turned off. Watson working against Berberina, down to five. So that's going to go against Al DeRusso. I think it's on the body. It's still on the bonus. Hillary's looking to tie it up here. Oh, you missed? Yes. Delgado front rims the first. Got a rebound here. If you're looking for the drama. Oh my god, this is perfect drama. You gotta keep the composure though. The Crimson Tide have to keep the composure. I'm gonna say it one more time. Keep your composure, run the offense. You gotta box these dudes out. The guy's owning you guys down in the box. You gotta push them around. Yeah. I almost swore. Sorry. Dang, it's all right. You did it. That's all that matters. But hey, listen, you gotta hit the glass, gotta box out, put bodies on it, try to play mistake free basketball. And the last team standing will be uh, be walking out of this gym with a big dub. What a game, though. Oh, it's intense. This is, this is what you like to see when it's tourney time. We're, Absolutely. We're, we're a few days away from March, but uh, March Madness is it. March Madness coming to you early. So the Hillies getting their first lead in the game towards the end of that quarter. Tide took it right back on a Dorosario drive to the basket, but... This one has all the makings of down to the wire. I'd like to see the Tide get back to upping their pace offensively. Just because the Hillies are in a zone, you can still get into your sets and attack the basket and yeah. attack with force. Oh my gosh, yeah. You see a lane taken. Make contact, draw the foul. It's huge for the Crimson Tide to box out. They need to box out. They need to box out. Away. Delgado with the steal. It was forced a little bit. Hey, we're looking to take the lead again. Nice block. Delgado trying to clear it up. Wow, what a block by Coggins. Eyes up, eyes up. 
Berberina in the corner. Gets it back to Dorosario. Berberina has it now. Tied up by one. Another steal by the Hillies. Their second steal to start this quarter. Something to keep note as this game has life left. Coggins calmly knocks down the first. Wallace checks out, replaced by number 14, Hunter Blaze. And Tyson Chu checks back into the game for the Crimson Tide. That's no good. Chun comes up with the rebound. Woo! Coggins is taking over in the fourth quarter. Coggins with the big take. Stepping up big. Strong drive by Delgado again. The big fella can get to the basket. He puts the ball in the duck very nicely, and he's going to go to the line with two. And that was on, I believe, DeRusso. No. First personal. 21, Berberino. Okay. So Delgado goes one for two. This is a four-point game as we approach the six-minute mark. No. Sportsmanship right there. Yeah. Leave that still go. Second and third. Second foul. Yeah. That was a good foul right there. Yeah. Trying to eliminate the easy two. And then Delgado daps him up after like, hey man, just making a play. Coggins received it. Good sportsmanship, good hot play. Both teams are leaving it all out there on the court. Coggins at the line. Wallace checks back into the game for the Hillies with four fouls. Coggins big time at the line, two for two, tied up by six. That's Crimson Tide basketball. There we go. Ever taking advantage of the Hillies' natural mistakes. capitalize on this right now. Leaves it to Coggins. Nice take by 
right there. Good finish by Carr. It's over to Great pass from Dorisario. Timeout Haverhill. I tell you, Dorisario puts the ball in the deck, then leaves the drop-off pass. That was big time. It was huge, huge. And how about Coggins, what he's done in this fourth quarter? He's stepping up big time. The seniors are stepping up. Is this enough? Junior. Oh, he's a junior. He's yeah. going back. Yeah. Even better. All right. The junior's stepping up. Upper class would have making it happen tonight. And the Crimson Tide fans are just giving us the Haverhill fans. I'll tell you what, though. So what you need to do is you got to keep it going defensively, right? Defensively, it starts there. Continue to dig in defensively. That means hitting the glass, right? you got to hit the glass. That's yes. a part of playing good defense. Absolutely. Keeping Haverhill off the offensive glass and then get into your offense. What the Tide have done a better job in this quarter is what we talked about. Just because you're in the zone, attack, attack. The zone shouldn't, the sh the zone shouldn't dictate the pace that you play. Exactly. It becomes a mental thing because it's a different change of walk when you see it. But it's a change of pace for them, yeah. Right. It's a change of pace for them, and they're taking advantage of it now with 5.26 to go here in the fourth. It took them a minute and to adjust, and now they've been capitalizing on it. Well, they got to keep it going because there's still a lot of time oh, yeah. left in oh, this game. That. And the Hillies have answered after every every question, every timeout. They've come out answered. Wallace back into the game with his fourth foul. Coming up with the board. Blocking. So that's the second personal on Coggins. Oh, okay, third. I, I guess I missed one. All right. We're always oh, missing moments, him. Yeah, I know. We, I know. I know it. <laughs> Delgado makes the second. One for two. Fourth quarter. 
Gets it over to Coggins at the top of the key. I want Coggins getting touches from here on out. Give it to your best players, like you said. And he's got it. Beautiful play. Big time basket by Tyson Schoon. Tied up by five. All right, back to defense. Got to dig in defensively. Yes, it was. He traveled. Telling coaches like, hey, he's got four fouls that Wallace. Yeah. So I would go right at him. It's true. He's got four. And you knew he would come together offensively. He's big. He hasn't missed a free throw yet. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. That's what it's all about. Turning the basketball at its finest. All right, Malik, we'll see you. I want to thank you all for watching. Agents Channel 8 at home, and we're live on YouTube. If you just tune in now, it's an intense game right now. I race up 67-66 with 121 to go here in the fourth quarter in the MIAA first round tournament play. All right, here we go. Oh, 
Russo. Be smart with the basketball now. Be smart. Up by one. There's the guy right there. All right, get back. Get back. It was on the floor. It was on the floor. And that's five fouls on Al DeRusso. So he has fouled out of this game. Here comes Pinto. Pinto's answered in these moments before. Yes, he has. And for the senior, Al DeRusso always gives you minutes. We hope. This isn't the end, but he has given you minutes all season long. See if his teammates can keep this going. signal for a timeout. So Crimson Tide basketball timeout called. 39.7 seconds left. Tied up by one. There's a five second difference from game clock to shot clock. Yeah. Right now, we've I'll seen just the scenarios it. before. Oh, yeah. you got to be sure you pass. If you're not sure, take a moment and make sure the right pass is there. This is a big time spot for the time. Up one with the basketball. Hopefully they can draw something up out of this timeout to get some guys some space on the floor. But remember, be sure of that pass. If there's too much space, then you might not want to make it unless if you know your guy's there. Otherwise, close in, try to keep someone within range to get to the, the ball handler so then there's no turnovers here. I'm as red as my shirt right now, am I? No, actually, I, I think you look fine right now. I think you look fine. I'm not sure exactly. I can tell that my heat index is oh, yeah. way up right now. Absolutely. Woo. All right, so well, here we go. Yeah. I mean, I'm telling you, this is wild. This is what, what it's all about. All right, so they're breaking, coming out of the huddle. Crimson Tide basketball. If you're the Tide, I think it's pretty simple. Do whatever you can to get the ball into Jay Sean Coggins' hands. I trust Coggins. He's been your best free throw shooter. He's been your best player. All season long. Also, create a lane for him. Box someone out. That's right. Get some screens. Try to get a lane open. All right, here comes the inbound. Haley's pressing. That a foul to give. They actually have a couple. That's the third team foul. So Haverhill still has two more fouls before the tie will be shooting. And now there's a three-second difference between game clock and shot clock. Got to get it in. Got to get it in. Timeout call. Go smart. Very smart. Tell you, you might want to set some screen action, though. Try to get some bodies, create yeah. some space. Yeah, screens, picks, up and around, over unders, all that fun stuff. Get creative. Just get the ball in because you know they're going to hack right away because they have two more fouls. Until, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm distracted by everything around no, us. Listen, this, this is a lot going on right now. There's a lot happening, okay? I'm sure you're taking that in at home. I hope you're hearing us all right, but I'm not going to apologize for it because we got the crowd loud and proud right behind us. The Ever Crimson Tide faithful are here serving notice, and hopefully the Tide can keep that celebration going. But it's going to take smart plays on the court to keep this thing in the Tide's favor. The Hillies have fought the whole night, and they've made this thing very interesting as they're down just one. So we'll see. Someone's going to walk out of here with a great win. Someone else is going to experience heartbreak. We'll see how this all plays out. Let's see what the Crimson Tide can do here with 38 seconds to go. All right, so Crimson Tide basketball coming out of the timeout. They're going to face a very vaunted, hilly press right now. Let's see if they can make the right plays to get out of it. No, 
knocked out of bounds. Good defense by Wall. If I was one of the tie players, I'd be running with him. I'll put my hand on his hip and push him off. Hopefully they don't call it. Okay, so Coggins comes down with it. That's the fourth team foul. So one more foul, the tie will be shooting. The Hillies are doing a great job fouling. And because you're going right back underneath the net. If the Crimson Tide get the ball like half court that you get from there, you know what I mean? Five second violation is called. So the Tide are going to have to dig in defensively. Called by Haverhill. This is nuts. Absolutely wild right now. Haverhill doing good job right there. Causing the five second violation. So I think they ran the same thing again. I, I thought they were going to run something different. The tied defensively. You're going to have to come up with one here. All right, so there you go. Great Haverhill Hilly defense gets them the five second call. So now the tied are going to have to come up defensively, protect the basket. Try not to give any good looks right now. And also, you want to do it smart. You don't want to foul. One more foul. Either team shooting right now with bonus basketball on the horizon. So hopefully the tie can come up with the play defensively. Pressure the inbounder. Try to watch for the cutters going to the basket. The Hillies will be inbounding right underneath their own basket. So they're right there. Look for those cuts to the basket. And hopefully the tie can come up with one. I would have Coggins right on the ball handler. Hands in his face, waving around, distracting, confusing him. Second. 
It's a two-point game. with the final answer and what a great basketball game it was. Ty lose a heartbreaker, 69-67. Bird, what'd you see in those final moments? Too many mental mistakes at the end there. They, they looked like they panicked a little bit and you see the result right there. Well, they keep the composure and they couldn't do it. I mean, the intensity in this place is wild right now. But you know what, there's a lot of juniors coming back for the senior year, and they're going to make a huge difference coming up in the upcoming season. Great job by the seniors this year. You have nothing to be ashamed of. Oh, absolutely. Bert couldn't have said it better myself. Heartbreak indeed, but to those seniors, they poured their hearts out. Left it all out in the court. A thriller goes by way to the Hillies. They will move on to take on North Andover this Friday up in North Andover. For the Crimson Tide, their season ends tonight. Not before one last final ride. I'm Josh Dalgay, so on behalf of uh, Bird Marchant, we thank you for joining us as always on Crimson Tide TV.